Fantastic. Welcome everybody for joining us today for uh, Social Finance Chats. Uh, today we're going to talk about financing to acquire. Um, I'm Christy Fairholm Mater. I'm the Managing Director of the Thrive Impact Fund. Emmeline, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, obviously. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today. I'm Emmeline Nguyen. I'm uh, the Impact Investment Manager for Thrive Impact Fund. Uh, and working I more on the side of yeah, the investees. Fantastic. And I'd like to also acknowledge that um, we come to you today from the Lagwangan speaking territory of the Songhees and Esquimalt nations, where we have um, the honor to get to live, work, and play here. So um, just wanted to recognize our, our territory. Next. So, just as a quick overview of Thrive Impact Fund. We are really focused on investing in impact organizations and social enterprises. And for us, that is nonprofits, charities, cooperatives, and deeply values aligned social enterprises. So we're incorporation agnostic, um, but we've really focused on in terms of investing in these organizations is that we make the financing that we provide to be highly flexible and adaptable and meet the needs of entrepreneurs, no matter what incorporation that they're in. So for us, this really means that we're looking at the right capital at the right time. So the kind of businesses and social enterprises that we focus on is early revenue. So this is where um, you have an enterprise or a social enterprise or a fee for service or a revenue stream that has some traction, right? So it has some demonstrated revenue. And, um, and so we wanna make sure. So we're not in the startup phase before there's revenue, but at the point where some revenue has been demonstrated. And this is often called like that first capitalization. And so it's looking at, okay, we've done this, we've proven our model, and now we're getting to the point where we want to be able to grow. And so that is where Thrive Impact Fund provides early revenue financing, as well as growth and acquisition. And we're going to talk about acquisition today. The way that we do that is through flexible debt. And so we provide very patient loans and revenue-based financing. We look at what are the terms and, and ways that we can make that capital fit the needs of your project. And so this is our approach around the right capital at the right time. And then for those that um, become investees of Thrive Impact Fund, we provide wraparound mentorship, peer learning, and ongoing support to help you succeed. Getting a little bit deeper into the early revenue loan, you know, that early stage is up to three years. It's pretty flexible grace period. Um, and it's really to sort of get, thing, get things moving. Then we look at those flexible term loans, again, up to six years. We have very flexible collateral requirements. We know that one of the barriers to accessing financing is the ability to have non, not have collateral be required in order to access financing. So we're removing that barrier. Um, and then we really look at tailoring interest only periods or when principal gets repaid and so on. And so we have a lot of tools that we can use to, to fulfill that need and that goal of flexible financing. And then revenue-based financing is up to seven years. It's a pay-as-you-grow model. And so, and it's a, it's a shared success model. So for that first stage of early revenue loans, those are loans and investments up to 100K. And then above 100K, between 100 and about 500K is where we will invest in. We have a two-step application process. So I'm going to pass over to Emmeline, who's going to dig into our topic today around financing to acquire. Thank you, Christy. Um, so indeed, today we wanted to focus on uh, acquisition, which is a great way for uh, our sector to improve their revenue streams. Um, and there are several elements to consider uh, when you consider and contemplate a, an acquisition, especially around financing. Um, so we will look today into different types of acquisitions. Uh, present an ideal acquisition roadmap based on, on uh, another program that SCADE is running. Um, the financing that is available to purchase, uh, the due diligence you need to undertake, and give an example of a financing mix for a successful acquisition. Uh, you have different types of acquisitions. They can be real estate uh, assets in businesses. They all provide these new streams of revenue um, and require generally intensive capital investments. Uh, the three type of purchase come with different elements to assess. In the case of real estate, um, it will be the valuation of the property, <clears throat> an environment assessment, uh, generally uh, the construction projects or improvement works that you want to um, implement, 
um, but also securing the right uh, property management capacity and having good tenants perspectives. In the case of assets uh, like equipment or machinery, you will need to evaluate what type of asset you want and need, the models, the guarantees that come with it. And for business acquisition, the valuation of the business itself, uh, you will do if you will do a share or asset purchase, but also the, the right management capacity and the reporting structure between um, the, the parent company acquiring um, and the, the business that comes generally through a subsidiary. And today we'll focus on business acquisitions um, with the right step to follow, the key elements to consider <clears throat> and the financing available. The purpose of acquiring a business, uh, especially for nonprofit organization, is to purchase an existing revenue stream that will be immediately available for your organization uh, and you'll be able to grow it, uh, maybe turn the acquired business into a social enterprise aligned with your mandate by improving its processes, implementing living wage, uh, refocusing its mission towards social purpose. It helps leapfrog the risky startup phase of a social enterprise and secure new revenue streams for nonprofits, bringing them to stronger financial positions. Here is an acquisition roadmap for business purchase. Uh, this is an excerpt from the Pathway to a Successful Business Purchase, which is a guidebook for nonprofit acquisition uh, that has been adapted from the Venture Connect guidebook uh, through the Business Legacies program from Scale Collaborative. Maybe we can put the link in the chat if you want more information about it. Um, and you can see here that there are six main steps involved in the process, planning the acquisition, identifying the right fit, performing due diligence, financing the deal, launching the new business, and then sustaining it by turning it into a social enterprise and scaling it. The step we're interested in today, particularly is the financing investing part of this roadmap, where you're making an offer putting together the right financial mix for your purchase and performing the financial due diligence. If you look at financial investments, here is the timeline uh, and, and capital intake for a business acquisition, where you have lower cost in the early steps of planning and searching. Uh, then it grows a bit during the due diligence phase with like several fees you'll need to cover for assessments. Um, and the higher expenditure comes with the purchase itself. And during the launch phase where you certainly have to reinvest and scale up the operations. It's really crucial not to underestimate the overall cost of the investment and plan for it in advance. Uh, adding some contingency funds can help also build uh, safety cushion for you. Uh, and then you make sure you run the math properly in terms of return and how sustainable the purchase will be uh, regarding the current revenue of the business, but also the debt service that you will have to, to, um, to repay. And to add to this is that the, the point of this slide is also to say that plan, search, and assess piece has fairly low risk by you looking at things, being able to understand, to do the due diligence. It is when you get to the invest part, the financing part, that then you, you take the leap. So being able to look and assess and do all that work prehand um, is, is the precursor to being able to determine if you want to take that step and if that's worth it for your organization. Um, and for each step, you have different financing available. Uh, in the first phase of planning, searching, and assessing, uh, you generally finance through bootstrap in-house income based on your internal capacity and resources. You may be able to access some grants uh, to cover the cost of planning and exploration, uh, particularly grants towards social enterprise development uh, that can help you hire a consultant with specific ex expertise. Uh, you can also raise some donation or bring a capital campaign uh, with a targeted outreach to uh, relevant donors. Uh, the more costly steps of investing and launching, um, here you can tap into savings. It's a good way to use this money that is sitting on a GIC, uh, though you never want to completely self-finance uh, and having some kind of down payment can at least help you leverage uh, other type of financing. That can take the form of vendor financing if the seller is offering some delaying payment, uh, it takes the form of a short-term loan generally. And it also helps to uh, make sure that the seller stays engaged during the transition phase uh, and has interest in the success of the new ownership. Debt is the main way uh, to finance business acquisition. 
And you should prioritize here some financial partners that are aligned with your mission, but also have a knowledge of the sector and are able to take more risk, such as credit unions, community futures, or impact investment funds. Uh, and ideally, you like access some debt that is flexible and patient. Under the form of long-term loans uh, with flexible terms, low collateral requirements, but also models that are pay as you grow as revenue-based financing. And to sustain, once you've launched and want to grow your acquired business, here you can rely on the earned income of the, the acquired business that generally ideally has a good profitability profile. Uh, and you'll be able to finance your working capital as you grow with the revenue you generate. Um, you can also leverage equity uh, if the business that you want to purchase is a for-profit. Um, and equity is an investment where you'll have definitely some return uh, to, uh, to have to, to invest in for a portion of your company. But that can be a very long patient partnership. Crowdfunding and community bonds uh, are a great way to um, launch a very large capital campaigns. Uh, and a good way to raise funds, your nonprofit will issue bonds, sell those to your community in order to raise capital. Uh, they have generally very uh, friendly terms in terms of repayment. They are though some complex instrument that require research, investigation, but also uh, quite a large marketing capacity. So this has to be planned uh, quite a long time in advance. Um, the sources of funding and financing will vary in terms of ease to access, risk to reorganization. It will depend on the business, the industry, uh, your life cycle steps and the market context. Um, most of the deals will uh, combine these different types of financing. Um, and we will look at that into, uh, into the space a bit later. In terms of due diligence, uh, assessing financials is definitely key to the success of your purchase because you will repay most of the financing that you've leveraged through uh, the revenue stream and the, the EBITDA line of the new business. Um, and this is what you are acquiring at the end. So make sure you gather sufficient financial information um, that are also presented in a reliable format. At least notice to reader statements, if not audited. Beware with in-house prepared statements which cannot really provide you with enough clarity of the fundamentals of the, the asset you're acquiring. Other key elements you need to look at are assets and appraisals, especially environmental assessment, the contracts with customers, suppliers, employees, insurances, trademarks and goodwill. Uh, and if you purchase shares, be very thorough in assessing the liabilities involved, the money owed to suppliers, to employees, to government, but also maybe to shareholders. Uh, that will help you avoid buy surprises. And last but not least, make sure there is no legal issue with taxes or other topics. During those phases, don't hesitate to get some help uh, from business purchase professional. This is quite uh, a strong ecosystem. Um, and even experienced entrepreneurs need help to draft letters of intent. It's always better to have another perspective as well as your own. Uh, some of the main service providers involved in business purchase are lawyers. A lawyer is the right choice if you're drafting a definitive legal agreement. They may not need to be involved too early, uh, and they're generally quite costly, so uh, you need to choose precisely at what step you, you get them involved. Uh, brokers and realtors, if they specialize in business sale, uh, they will be trained to using their purchase form to negotiate a deal with you and can help you also uh, identify the right fit. Business advisors, if they have the right skill and experience, uh, can be very valuable to help you uh, build your documentation uh, and negotiation ideas. Venture Connect uh, is a great stakeholder in the ecosystem that may act as a mediation role, can answer your questions, make suggestions, and discuss options with both buyer and sellers in assisting them to come to an agreement. The cost range uh, for those services uh, goes from $500 to up to uh, 5K, more for purchase documentation. Um, moving through the letter of intent, uh, we'll have the details in place prior to engage the lawyer and save you some time and money. We will now look into an example of a financial mix suitable for a business purchase. Uh, we took here the example of a local charity purchasing a community cafe. 
Uh, in terms of expenses, in this case, we consider that the purchase is made through share purchase of the accrued business and we'll add some marketing expenses to communicate on the new ownership, some professional fees, so the one we just described, a lawyer or a consultant, and the hire of a new salesperson. In terms of resources, uh, we built a financial mix here involving a term loan from a credit union, uh, some revenue-based financing from an impact fund, some financing from the existing seller, and a donation. Uh, we introduced this framework in all last social finance chat on creating your financial myths to guide you through the key components and questions. Uh, so you can break down this Canva in eight boxes providing information about your project. Box number one, uh, you describe the expenses, so the purchase of the shares, after valuation, the marketing cost, the new hire, the professional fees. Box number two is the repayment stream. Uh, so again, you'll repay this purchase by the existing revenue. Uh, maybe from other streams as well, but uh, firstly from, from the existing uh, revenue of the business. And hopefully this uh, stream will grow. Box number three and four, the type of capital and potential investors. Uh, with assets available, it's fairly easy to leverage traditional debt for a significant amount of the mix. The remaining capital amount can be covered with flexible debt. Here we took the case of our revenue-based financing loan which can provide a very flexible repayment profile based on the revenue growth of the accrued business. Um, and for those interested in learning more about RBF, we hosted our first social finance chat on the topic. So you can see the recording on, on our website. On top of traditional debt and RBF, uh, we, top, we took the hypothesis that the organization will benefit from vendor financing and a donation. In terms of timeline, we know business purchase generally have tight timelines and the opportunity must be seized quite quickly. Uh, we imagine here that investment can come in two chunks, one capital intake to secure the business acquisition, another to launch it and scale it with new staff uh, and marketing expenses. For exit planning, RBF is by nature a safe liquidating tool. Uh, and we take the assumption that the traditional debt will be repaid in five years. Uh, your team and monitoring of payment. Uh, keep in mind that revenue-based financing requires quite uh, a close monitoring on sales and investor relations. So you need to be able to, to secure this reporting and, and communication capacity. Um, generally, overall consideration is that you need, when you identify the right financing tool, you need to pay attention to the amount you need to raise. Uh, lower amount will drive you to more simple and straightforward instruments like term loans. Uh, you don't launch a community bond for 100 k uh, The margin and growth projection of the business will help you assess what is your repayment capacity. Uh, in the case of an RBF, for example, you need quite strong margins. The collateral available uh, is crucial to leverage traditional debt. And marketing and backend capacity uh, are really key to success for a community bond or a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, and as a general consideration as well, it's always better to look for a global envelope that includes also the reinvestment you are willing to implement during the launch phase. It helps you prove your point to your financial partner that you really have planned to improve in operation and have some future plans for the business. And it's never ideal to get back to your lender six months after to ask for, traditional, for additional financing. To end this session, this is a quick reminder of our impact fund financing offer, uh, as Chrissy described, providing patient and flexible loan and revenue-based financing. And the way we approach business acquisition uh, and acquisition in general is that we will look both into uh, financial of the parent and acquired business, uh, both past and future, and base the repayment capacity on the um, merge forecasted cash flow. We will tailor the financing tool to help make the equation work, limiting the financial pressure, adjusting repayment trajectory uh, with a potential deferral in principal repayment to give you some runway, uh, let's say in the first year of purchase and the transition phase. And we provide capacity building prior and after the loan is approved uh, with specific expertise in-house about nonprofit purchase uh, through uh, our program business legacies. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. We're gonna move to Q&A now. Uh, just to remind that our next uh, Thriving Impact on Information session will happen on June 7th.
And the last social finance shadow of the semester will be about regenerative financing uh, in June 28th. Maybe, Christine, you want to give a little uh, description of this final chat? Yes, so thank you, Emmeline. And I also wanted to say that I put a link into the to the chat for anybody who is looking at, you know, acquiring a social enterprise in general. We do have an upcoming, you know, community session that talks about the process of acquisition and specifically for nonprofits and structures. And we'll tell some stories about nonprofits that have acquired. So if this is new to you, if you're already sort of thinking about it and the financing piece, but if you're like, oh, I want to learn more about what's possible in terms of acquiring an existing business and transitioning it to social enterprise, that sessions coming up with also a potential invitation to join the next incubator. So I put that link into the chat. And this next social finance chat will be a, a bit of a philosophical conversation about how do we do financing that is not extractive, but is regenerative. And so that's that concept of, of that the entrepreneur and the impact comes first, um, and that we look at investments and investing in a way where, where we're building up strong enterprises is a bit of a different a different approach of saying like profits come first. So some of the principles around regenerative finance and, and how that turns up, you know, both sort of in the sector of impact investors and, and people who are looking for financing as well as how Thrive Impact Fund is moving forward those principles. So, and then finally, um, before we move to questions, we wanted to say that we're hosting an event coming up called Connect Money Impact here in Victoria at UVic. Um, this is specifically for social entrepreneurs that are looking for investment. This is for impact investors that are looking to find good investments. And these are for intermediaries or ecosystem builders that are caring about um, what's happening in, um, in, this, in this place of trying to grow and, and nurture and strengthen our, our social economy and, and social enterprise sector. So the link's in there, learn more. We're selling our tickets quite quickly. We don't have that many spaces. We only have a hundred. So that's 30 social entrepreneurs and 30 investors and 30 ecosystem builders. And I'm seeing that it's beginning to sell. So if you'd like to come, we'd love to have you there and just encourage that you get your ticket quickly. Thank you. So, so we'd like to open it up for questions. And here's Our my thoughts. contact information also if you ever want to have more information or jump on a call. I think we're a small number. So if you want to uh, turn on your camera and your mic and just pop in uh, with any thoughts or question, that'd be great. Yes, it is. So we do have some people coming from other places, but it is an in-person event at University of Victoria because um, people want to see each other, I think. So a chance to, to connect in person. So if there are no questions, I think Emmeline has a quick survey that to pop in and we'd love to have you fill out the evaluation and um, that helps guide us in terms of other conversations that we want to have moving forward and and begin to prep for our fall series of social finance chats thank you everybody for attending we'll leave this open and lameline and i will stay on here for another five minutes if you do want to chat more in detail with us <laughs>